Hi, I'm Stermy from SoSo, -So, and today I have yet another video that is a little of a tangent, but it's a very important question. To scoop or not to scoop? I just got done having a three month long skill building session in my sewing community all about fitting pants. And I wanted to pop on here and do a little video about something that came up over and over and over and over and over. Is it okay to scoop the crotch curve? I don't do fitting videos to speak of. I do fit things on live streams, yes, but generally the content I upload is usually how to's, luxury rants like this one, philosophical sewing musings and other alternative sewing stuff that sometimes doesn't even have sewing in them. I don't think I even realized I didn't upload fitting tutorials until I made this video, but I had to make a video about this particular topic because it's important. And anytime I see people being chastised about something as if there's some book of sewing rules that only a select few have read or own, I'm going to get on here and tell you what's what. As many of us know, fitting pants isn't the easiest task, especially if you're just learning. And some pants are easier than others to fit. One pair of pants may be hard to fit on yourself, but the same pair may be easy for someone else. That's how it is, right? We're all different. And just when you have it figured out, your body changes. We, like our patterns, are a work in progress. On a side note, many in the, my pants fitting skill building session were fitting the same pants as one another, and it was fascinating, especially since they were all very different from one another, but had the same fitting issues sometimes. Why is that? Could it be there is something funny about the pattern, or maybe it was a design element that wasn't really working out for them? It actually doesn't matter. I'm not concerned if a pattern is made correctly at that point. I'm not here to bash a pattern. If someone has purchased it, cut it out, and they're fitting it, it's too late to debate about how well a pattern is drafted. And hey, it'll work better on some people than others anyway. So while I may preach about researching a pattern and looking at the hashtags for it and seeing who they use to model it, at the end of the day, you can fit anything. It just may take a bit more effort in some cases. And just like in ready to wear, we are often not the body type they use to draft their pattern. And I wanna make sure you know my philosophy about fit while you listen. And I'll explain it a little more later on too. My take on fit is if you are comfortable and you like the way it looks, it fits perfectly. Sure, there are some constraints if you're going to compare what makes a trouser a pair of trousers, a pair of slacks a pair of slacks, or jeans a pair of jeans. But at the end of the day, do you like it? Are you comfortable and will you wear it are the main guiding principles. One of the phrases I repeated during this skill building session was, we're fitting one person and one pair of pants. And what I meant by this was, don't jump into the rabbit hole and start saying, well, what if this and what if that? One person, one pair of pants. We don't have to make this pants pattern into a commercial pattern for sale. It doesn't have to have a generic fit to accommodate others. It needs to fit you. And what are you willing to do to make it fit? Stop thinking about what's right and wrong or what others think about how your pants fit. They're not wearing them and you're not selling the pattern. So just focus on you. Something I've noticed since coming to the home sewing world is the emphasis on fit. And yes, many come to sewing because they can't find clothes that fit them the way they want or even in their size. And that is absolutely a critical and positive element about making our own clothes. But what I'm really talking about is the focus on pants fitting and what you should do, what you shouldn't do, how your pants should fit, how, your, how they shouldn't fit. And quite honestly, there are no rules about this, none no matter what anyone tells you, none. I promise, show me where it says pants need to fit a certain way. There is no mysterious compendium of clothing that is made up of unbreakable rules. So let's talk a little bit about fit. When you think of women's jeans from the 70s, what are you thinking? With that image in your head, let's think about them from the 80s and now women's jeans from the 90s. You see what I mean? They're all jeans. None of them are wrong. The way we like them to fit has changed a lot. The main function of fit is to reflect two main things, how you want the garment to hang on your body or how the designer wanted their design to look on the wearer. Fit is a fluid concept. If you'll remember, I gave an example back in January using men's pants, since it's a very obvious example of how preference is a key role in fit. 
When the slouchy fit came onto the scene, it changed the way the wearer wanted their pants to fit. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks, except the wearer. He or she may like their pants slipping off of their hips. And I think most would agree that this fit style was polarizing. Some hated it, others loved it. It was even a dress code violation in some situations. Was the fit correct? It doesn't matter, but yes, it was because that's how they wanted it. But it's honestly, whether the fit was correct or not isn't the question. Questions about fit boil down to, are they comfortable and do you like them? And if you asked anyone wearing slouchy pants falling off their hips if they liked the fit of their pants, the last thing they are going to say is, well, I wish they'd stay on my hips. And yes, I doubt anyone wearing this look is concerned with their crotch curve. But my point is that fit is personal. While hosting my skill building session, I explored other methods to fit pants since I get questions about all sorts of methods and books all the time. Everyone is looking for that magic method that is easy and quick but it's work and in many cases it's not fast and there's no magical method. It may take four to 10 samples too. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe someone who has experience fitting pants only needs one sample. Good for them, but who cares? Do you want good fitting pants or not? It's a process. It all comes down to adding fabric where it's tight and taking fabric away where it's too loose. And all successful methods do both. You can use any method you like to get the pants you want. There's nothing wrong with any method if it gets you the results you're looking for. Let's get back to the question of to scoop or not to scoop. Even though I am pretty sure you know where I land on this. And I'd say this as is an age old question, but people, it's not. This was never a controversial question until pretty recently. And if anyone tells you you can't do it, they're wrong. Here's the deal. Scooping the crotch isn't a common fit adjustment. Every person does not need to do this. It's as common or uncommon as any other adjustment. It's just one of many and it works for a couple of issues and that's it. There's absolutely no reason whatsoever to not do it. It's just a seam. I've seen some arguments about this that are somewhat condescending, chiding, and shaming toward people who do want to scoop the crotch, but I don't know why. Maybe they've found their crotch curve and don't understand why anyone would need to change it. Anytime I see anyone making someone feel bad about wanting to do something to make their clothes fit better, I get a little heated. They're not wearing your clothes. They're not going to grade your results. You are not selling the pattern and they don't have to live with the results. Plus it can be inadvertently sizist and racist. So another aspect of this is when you hear that a designer says you're not allowed to change the crotch curve of their pattern, because it changes the look of their design. In my opinion, this is a pretty bold statement for a home sewing pattern company to make because what if the pattern doesn't fit the person the way it's designed to reflect the designer's intention and scooping the curve would make it look the way the designer wanted. Not to mention that saying someone shouldn't change a crotch curve can be unintentionally sizist or racist as well. All bodies are different. We all have different needs and all seams are an opportunity. We are not some canvas a designer gets to dictate what is on it. We sew because we want choice. If there was one crotch curve that fit everyone, I think we'd know what it is by now. We don't have these sorts of exclusionary rules surrounding armholes, sleeves, or darts. I'm not sure how it got like this or why. Part of me thinks it comes from a fear of the crotch curve and how difficult it can be to understand what is happening there. And I understand this. However, if you close yourself off to the crotch curve, you lose an option for fitting. Fitting is a vast landscape. One of the other things that was new to me when I started sewing on YouTube and sort of entered being in the home sewing world are all the named fit adjustments like full bust adjust adjustment, full calf, low bum, etc. These don't exist in the garment industry. We just change the pattern to fit the person. And if you limit yourself to those named changes, you're limiting yourself, period. If you have extra fabric, get rid of it. If it's too tight, add some. I'm not teaching anything right now, but that is the gist of all fit adjustments, right? And when you're doing custom stuff like we do in home sewing, you're basically using techniques from draping and flat pattern making to achieve your goals. I think many home sewists are worried they're going to make changes to a pant pattern that will throw the pattern off balance, change the grain line, or do something wrong even if they don't know what that is. But the thing is, 
If they're fitting you and you've cut them on grain, you're doing things correctly. Another huge aspect never really talked about in pant fitting is posture. You may have a low flat butt, but the changes to the pattern that are usually used to accommodate it didn't work. And that can simply be because you have a posture that tilts your hips or pelvis in a way that changes the fit adjustment you need. There's also the bias at the juncture of the crotch curve and inseam. Sometimes the pant fabric type plus the amount of bias that is there is just too much and creates another fit issue. Yes, it seems impossible, but my point is you don't have to have a prescribed fit issue in order to fit yourself. Pinch and pull. So I want to show you a little example because I feel like I need to. Okay, so this summer I decided to make my own custom pant form and I'd never done that before. I've repaired dress forms like old traditional ones for um, work rooms and things, but I'd never constructed one from scratch. And so I got a pattern from Bootstrap Fashion and put in my measurements and everything. And I made a pant form. She's hanging back there next to my Beatrice dress form. And then I kind of took it one step further and I've made this half cross section view. So basically a quarter of a dress form, not quarter scale, but a cross section of the pant form. And it really, I just did it as a, just as an experiment. I wasn't sure if it would actually be a good teaching tool or it would actually be useful, but it actually has been really interesting because you can really see this, this is my dress, this is my pant form. Her name's Jelly Bean because I, you know, we all think that the crotch curve looks a little bit like a jelly bean, right? So what you're looking at here is this is the front. So this is my belly or her belly. And then this is the butt, right? And this is my guts. This is the inside of me. And this is the crotch curve. This is the inseam. And then this is the outseam. Now I just full disclaimer here. I have a few things to say. Uh, while she was made with my measurements, I didn't mount her on the pole using my posture or things like that. And I didn't try and um, make her a replica of me. I just wanted a cross section of a pant or a body to use. I didn't really care if it was mine. I'm not using it as a tool for me. I'm using it as a tool for anybody. Um, the other thing uh, I should say is I just threw this little sample on here. It's left over from a demo um, that I didn't end up using and it's mainly because all the lines on it got drawn incorrectly and so they look a little funny, but I, I know they'll be hard to tune out, but I just want to use that as a disclaimer. I also never clipped the crotch curve, but I did that so that I can turn it back and you can see what's happening here. Uh, so that's another thing I want to say. And the fabric is kind of, um, it's kind of actually been difficult to use as a fitting fabric, but who cares, right? I mean, even if it's hard, at least it's something to use as an exercise, okay? so. I know it's a lot of disclaimers. But. <laughs> All right, so this particular pair of jeans is a high-waisted jean, and this right here is about where I think that I would normally have my waist on my pants. I know that even though she's not a replica of me, at least it's just a point of reference, right? So I can move this little piece of elastic wherever I want, but right now it's right there, and I used some tape to kind of also illustrate that. So um, the, the thing is, I'm just going to use this as a demonstration because I, and this is last minute, but um, I just feel like uh, it's visual is always helpful, right? And this is not a teaching tool right now. So I just want to put that out there. I know that there's going to be people saying, but, but, but can I do this for me? And you might be able to, I don't know. Um, this isn't going to fit, help everybody, but it will demonstrate why sometimes redrawing the crotch curve is really important. So you can see these dra diagonal drag lines under the bum here. This is such a common fitting issue that I see a lot of times and there's a lot of ways to go about fixing it. And it depends on what you have going on. And this pant has a lot of things going on, like I haven't fitted at all. So it has a few things I would do first and then I would address this um, and, and see where that was at, okay? so. There's a lot of steps in pants fitting and I don't usually start right here. So one of the things that you can do to get rid of this right here is you can see that this fabric, cause see how it's like pushing down? Like there's these like drag lines that are kind of sagging. Well, if you pull it up, you see how they disappear right there? Like that's now getting better, right? 
So if we pull this up, and you know, if we were wearing these, it would be a little easier to tell, and it would it would glide a lot better too. Like working on a dress form is a little tricky for that reason too. So then I'm left with this huge like gate gape right here, right? And so I would take a horizontal wedge. You know, like I said, there's a lot of ways to go about this, and I would have made sure that the waist fit, the circumference fit, all that kind of thing first. All right, and so. When I take this wedge out, it would have to go all the way to the side seam, right? So we take this wedge out and then we would be able to see that we got rid of a lot of those drag lines there. I think that this needs a little bit more circumference in the thigh and that would help as well, you know? So, you know, I would be pulling these out, um, things like that, right? But when I do that, right? You can see it's cutting right into the crotch curve. Now this is inside of her. So anything past this black line here, which I just like scraped off by accident, is going to be inside the person. Now I know that there are a lot of people that are okay with some fitting there and having some kind of definition in the buttocks and that's totally fine. But there is a point where it, it goes beyond definition and it, it goes into a comfort thing, right? So that's when you have to redraw the, the crotch curve. And so this isn't necessarily a scooping thing. This is literally redrawing the pattern so that it fits the person correctly, or at least in a comfortable way. So then what I would be doing is redrawing this where it needs to be. You can see like this isn't, this isn't a, like usually when we're talking about scooping, we're usually talking about right down here because we're pulling up, or we're not pulling up, but we're getting rid of extra fabric there so it's not going up into the person. And this, we just made it go up into the person and we're actually redrawing this whole curve from like right here at this hip line down to the crotch line. And so then it wouldn't be going inside the body, right? So I just wanted to give you that kind of visual. And you can see right here how the front is not going all the way up to the front. That is also another fitting issue with the crotch curve and you would have to fix that as well. And you'd most likely have to add a little bit of fabric because what's gonna happen is if this was pulled here, you'd get whiskers, right? So picture this pant sewn to its counterpart, right? This is a mirror image and they would, there wouldn't be the um, forgiveness of not being tethered right here, right? Because right now this is just loose, it's just hanging here. But if it were sewn into the other front and there was a button fly in there or a zipper fly, whatever you're doing, there would be some pulling here. You'd see these little whiskers here. So that's another way where you would scoop that or add to it. So anyway, I just wanna give you that quick visual. I know I added to the video a little bit of time, but, um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I was genuinely curious if I'd miss this emphasis on fitting while learning how to draft patterns in school. I've been a professional pattern drafter for 31 years. So I did a little digging and researching. I still have my textbooks plus other books and there are oodles of resources now with the internet, but I stuck to instructional materials created and distributed by fashion design institutions. And I came up with nothing. There are plenty of opinions out there and personal preferences, and they are welcome to them. But they didn't write the rule book on pattern drafting and fit and decide not to share it. They are influential and they have opinions. Sometimes I think the more convincing one is, the more one can justify how they feel about something. Hey, look, there's a lot of information out there. Bloggers, YouTubers, magazines, podcasts, and so much more. There's a lot of great information, but there's a lot of information that is also being put forward that is not from a trained professional. It doesn't mean it's wrong. And professionals can be wrong too. So who do you trust? Trust yourself. If it works for you, that's all you need to know. I wish you the best of luck fitting pants. May your jelly bean get all the scooping it needs. Thanks for watching. There are resources in the description you might want to check out, like how I made my pant form, how I changed the fit of already sewn pants, and a couple of YouTube channels and books that I recommend. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Sarah Mee. Thanks for watching.